Hello everyone. Um, I'm Nina. Thank you for joining us today. We've been having a few technical difficulties, so we only have one camera today. So sorry you can't see my face, but um, we're going to be showing you everything right here um, with our Avid Armor A420 vacuum sealer. This is our newest model to the Avid Armor vacuum sealer lineup. Um, so we're going to go through, uh, show you all the features, uh, answer the most frequently asked questions and we want you to follow along as we go and if you have any questions along the way we would be happy uh, to answer them for you so we'll go ahead and get started so um, our a420 is packed with lots of bells and whistles that uh, most people compare this uh, vacuum sealer to our a100 uh, model and uh, I like to say this is a little bit more of a kitchen friendly uh, vacuum sealer model. We designed this one uh, as on the same platform as the A100, except for um, we added uh, a few more bells and whistles that people were wanting and we made the design much more uh, kitchen friendly. It looks really nice on your kitchen countertop. So the first thing is roll storage. A lot of people, uh, wanted roll storage especially if you're upgrading from a different brand of sealer a lot of those come equipped with uh, roll storage so if you've become used to that feature we wanted to bring that to you so you don't have to miss out on that when you're upgrading your sealer so this uh, vacuum sealer does have roll storage uh, right in here you open the lid and it can fit up to a 25 inch long 25 foot long roll um, uh, and it can seal up to 11 inches wide. So we have our 11 by 25 vacuum sealer roll in here and then it does have uh, a bag cutter. So it's really easy if you um, pull out your bag to your desired length and then just go ahead and cut it all the way across. Super simple to make uh, a custom size bag that you want. So once you're finished with that, you can close the lid and then we'll go ahead and make our first seal on, uh, on this bag so that way we can vacuum seal it. So this uh, the A420 does have a locking lid and a handle. Uh, that's different, a little bit different than the A100. The A100 lid does not lock. It only locks down by suction and vacuum, uh, vacuum and, and pressure. Um, so we did b do a built-in uh, kind of hands-free uh, lid on this uh, vacuum sealer. So if you're just making a seal, you technically don't have to put the opening of the bag in the vacuum channel because it doesn't need the vacuum. So if you want to, you know, save a little bag, you can pull it out a little bit. So we'll go ahead and lock both lids. The A420 does have a digital uh, display, so it will show ready whenever it's ready. And then you can select um, your seal, it's kind of like your seal time setting, um, whether you're vacuum sealing dry or moist, um, it's going to go for a little bit longer when it's on moisture, just so it can, um, you know, vacuum seal through any moisture that you're, uh, or sorry, it will seal through any moisture that you're trying to, uh, vacuum seal. So I'm going to go ahead, since we're just doing a seal only, I'm going to switch that to dry and we're going to press the seal button. Now, as you can see, it's showing the sealing progress. And whenever it's done, it will flash and then it will beep and show complete. So now it shows complete. So the first seal on the bag is done. So as you can see, there's a seal on there. So now we have a custom size bag and we can go ahead and vacuum seal our first food item. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw some corn in here. I probably technically made this bag a little bit big for this, but, but that's okay. Uh, we always like to say you should leave a couple inches of headspace to make sure uh, you get a good vacuum on whatever you're sealing. I left a lot more than that, but so to vacuum seal, all you're going to do is Put the opening of the bag inside this vacuum channel. Now the USV 20, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of dark in here, but um, there's these little tabs right here. Those are basically just to kind of hold the bag. So if, if it's curling up, it doesn't come out of the vacuum channel. Make sure the bag is nice and smooth across the seal bar. We'll lower the lid, uh, lock it in place. 
we're going to keep our seal time setting the same on dry. Um, that's perfectly sufficient for some corn. And then we'll just go ahead and press our auto vac and seal because we were wanting to vacuum and seal this bag. So one touch and it's, and it's done. And you see this does have a vacuum gauge that shows you the vacuum um, pressure when you're sealing. It's doing the sealing now. And our first vacuum sealed item is, well, there's some juices in that corn, so I made a little bit of mess, but uh, I'll go ahead and get that cleaned up. But it's nice tight vacuum, the seal I hope you can see that is nice and consistent all the way through. There's no wrinkles, there's no bubbles. You wanna make sure after you vacuum seal everything that, that you don't have any wrinkles or seals because if you do, that's gonna to lead to um, leaking when it's in the refrigerator or freezer long-term. Now, one of the cool features since I'm talking about this, um, the A420 does have a sensor right over here. So if you're vacuum sealing a lot of liquids um, which we don't necessarily suggest that you do um, because, you know, over time that can lead to uh, damaging the internal components of your vacuum sealer. But this does have a, a tray that will catch the, the liquids. And then it has these little sensors over here that if, if any liquids do reach this, um, this sensor, then it's automatically going to shut down the machine. It will display water on the control panel and it's not going to let you do any vacuum sealing until that's cleaned up. So I'll go ahead and just wipe, wipe that out of here. And don't forget, if you have any questions, we're happy to answer them as we, as we go along. Let's see, you got that all clean. All right. So, um, the next thing I want to show you is, um, the, the pulse vac. So the A420 also has a pulse vac setting. And what that means, what that allows you to do is vacuum seal fragile items that you don't want to completely crush. You're able to control the level of vacuum and then seal the bag uh, before it crushes. So I have some uh, little loaf of bread right here that we'll put in a, um, we'll put in a bag. Let's see. I'm actually gonna make a uh, make a bag for this real quick. Oop! Cut it. And this li this lid does have a little lock um, when it's up, so you don't have to mess with it. But um, let me go ahead and put the seal on this uh, bag real quick. All right, that's finished. So now I'm gonna load the bag with this loaf. And we wanna keep this, this nice and fresh, but we don't want to crush it. So, all right. So we're gonna put, uh, again, same as a regular uh, auto vacuum seal cycle, we're gonna put the opening of the bag in the vacuum channel, nice and smooth across the seal bar. Make sure that you have enough head space. We're gonna close the lid and lock it. And then we're gonna put it in pulse mode. And we're gonna press and release the vacuum um, with using the pulse button until we reach the desired vacuum level. And then we'll uh, press the seal button. So we can release it. It stops pulling the vacuum. Release. We're getting close. We want to vacuum seal it just till that bag starts to kiss the edges of that bread so it doesn't crush it. We're getting close. I'd say that's pretty good. Now we're going to seal it. And once we're done with that, I will go ahead and show you um, sealing this same item with just a regular auto vac. 
uh, and seal button so you can see the difference between using the pulse vac and the regular vac and seal. So as you can see, we've got a nice vacuum on it. It's not crushing the item. There's probably still a little bit. I could, probably could have done a little bit more, um, but we're definitely not um, crushing the item. So I'll go ahead and hopefully I saved enough room on this bag to reseal it. We'll try anyway. I can make another bag if not. Okay, so we'll put all the air back in there. And now we'll do a regular vacuum and seal cycle. And I'll show you how much the difference between using the pulse vac and using the auto vac and seal button. All right. See, it's what it's doing is it's removing literally all of the air from inside that bread or that cake, whatever you're, you're sealing. So there's a definite benefit to using that pulse vac if you want to uh, not crush those delicate baked goods. All right. So now you can see that's the difference between, I wish I had a before and after, but that's the difference between <laughs> using the regular auto vac and seal and the pulse function. All right. Are there any questions so far? No questions? Okay. I'll keep going. Um, another uh, frequently asked question that we get is uh, using the accessory pour or the canisters uh, in, in vacuum sealing mason jars. And you can do that. Uh, with the A420. The A420 has a, uh, a built-in storage for your hose and then it's got the accessory port right here on the uh, control panel. So over here on the side is the storage area for your hose. Super simple. Keep it you know, with your sealer so you don't lose it. This is the hose that comes with the A420. And then this is our uh, Avid Armor three-piece canister set. This is the smallest of the canisters. And <clears throat> what you can do is you can vacuum seal um, dry goods or fruits and vegetables directly in these canisters and keep them, you know, fresh for a lot longer. Um, if you're doing fruits and veggies, you can put them like lettuce, put them in the canisters, keep them in your refrigerator and they are not going to go bad as quickly. And then your dry goods like coffee beans, rice, pasta, um, all those kind of things are great things to keep stored in these canisters. So all we have to do is connect our hose to the accessory port and then we'll connect it to the lid on the canister and we're going to rotate to that to the seal and that's going to make sure that it's vacuuming and not re not releasing the air as it's going through the canister uh, vacuum cycle so all you have to do once you got everything connected you have your canister set to seal all you have to do is press your canister button oh sorry yep so that's a good good thing to show you. If you don't have your lid locked down, it's not going to let you try to vacuum seal anything. It's going to give you the error flash. Please close the lid. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that and then press, you'll see it display ready. Press canister. And it has a cute little canister icon on the display panel showing that it's vacuuming the canister. Once it's finished, um, it will... Uh, beep and say complete so then just be careful um, when you remove the the hose because if you rotate this dial to open you're gonna uh, release that vacuum so we always suggest turning the hose to remove it uh, in the direction opposite of the open uh, setting and then we can remove the hose so now we've got our canister the lid is locked on Right? And then this will uh, stay nice and vacuum sealed on your counter in your pantry. And then whenever you're, you're ready to use it to make some fresh ground coffee, all you have to do is uh, switch it to the open. You'll hear that vacuum release and it's ready to use. All right, we have a question. Austin. Hi, Austin. How are you today? 
Hopefully you're doing well on Friday. Uh, yes. What model vac sealer do you recommend for sealing poultry up? Which model vacuum sealer do you recommend for sealing poultry up? So honestly, um, are you referring, I don't know if you can answer this, but are you referring to a suction vacuum sealer as far as our, um, honestly, I think any of um, our sealers will work. It's going to depend on a lot of variables, how much you're doing. If you're kind of a processor and you're, you're vacuum sealing a ton of poultry, I would definitely recommend going with one of our um, more heavier duty models. So the A100 or our um, A420, they're both work great. They both have built-in cooling fans, so they're not going to overheat whenever you're uh, vacuum sealing. Uh, I guess is, our chamber sealers will work great too, um, especially if they're if your poultry has got a lot of high moisture content in it. Um, that will help with that. Um, but it kind of all just depends on you know what you're going to be doing. So if you have any additional questions about that, we can definitely help further uh, recommend something. You just uh, reach out to us, and we're happy to help. Um, any other, were there any other questions? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm trying to get my, there we go. Okay, so I kinda, uh, so then this uh, vacuum sealer also has uh, the marinating function. And what that does, you can actually, um, we have a marinating canister, a Magic Vac marinating canister. Um, I don't think we have it around here right now. Well, it's actually out of stock, but you can marinate directly in a canister um, using the marinate feature, and it's going to be the same principle as the canister function, except for it's going to, um, you're going to hook it up the same way. You're going to press the marinate function, and it's actually going to go in and out of vacuum for several times for several minutes. It's gonna hold the vacuum in that canister and then it's gonna release it and then it's gonna put it back under vacuum and it's gonna release it. And what that's gonna allow it to do is really uh, allow that uh, marinade to penetrate into the meat. It's, it's expanding the pores of the meat and then you'll get a rapid marination. So that's a, a nice feature um, of this sealer. Uh, let's see. Uh, I guess one of the last things that we wanted to go over was the differences between the A100 and the A420. Um, if I could get, let's see, I'm going to get my team real quick to bring up the A420. Um, it just, oh, I'm sorry, the A100. So it, we'll, we'll put them side by side and we'll, so we can show you some of the differences between the two. All right, so side by side, they, I hope, I hope you can see that. Parker, does that look okay? Okay, cool. So uh, side by side, they do have a similar footprint. Um, the, the handle on the A420 does uh, make it stick out a little bit more on your countertop. And it also has a little bit additional height because it does have the built-in roll storage. Now, um, again, the, A the A100 does not have roll storage. Um, another one of the major differences is the lid uh, functionality. So the A420, it's got the handle with the locking lid that locks down uh, before uh, you run a vacuum cycle. The A100, it's got um, a clear polycarbonate uh, lid that the cool thing about that is it allows you to be able to uh, see where you're placing the bag whenever you're about to vacuum seal. You can see that it's, you know, in the vacuum channel lined up properly. And then uh, we don't have this plugged in right now, but uh, we might be able to grab a power cord. But the, the A100 does not have a locking lid with an actual lock. 
it does lock down, but it's through a combination of pressure and vacuum. So once ever, whenever you press the start button, you're gonna press and hold down on the lid uh, for a few seconds, and then it will get the vacuum to engage. So now I think we're getting this plugged in so I can show you how that works. So sometimes a lot of people ask, well, which was, which is better? You know, honestly, neither one is necessarily better. It's a matter of preference, um, whichever you prefer. So this one might be a little bit more hands-on in the beginning of a vacuum seal process because, oops, um, because you do have to press and hold down on that lid until the vacuum engages. So I'll go ahead and, and show you that. Hopefully we don't blow any power circuits because we got so much stuff plugged in. <laughs> um, so as you can see, this, this lid during the vacuum cycle is locked down. So it does lock down. You just have to um, help it a little whenever that vacuum starts to get it uh, engaged. And then, um, so that's with the lid. That's the differences between the lid. Another difference is the seal, the actual seals themselves. So the A100 has a, a one single seal, but it's a thick five millimeter seal. I hope you can see that. So it's one thick seal. And then the uh, A420, and this bag is all gunked up from the liquid, but it has two, uh, two or three millimeter seals on it. So that second seal, a lot of people like that because it gives uh, a little bit more security. If one of the seals fails, surely the second seal will uh, hold up. So some people like this, that better. Um, and then this one's also nice though, because since it is so thick when you're sealing stuff with more moisture, it's a little bit more forgiving uh, when you have a lot of moisture to make a, a good seal. So that's um, the seal area. They both, um, they both have a double piston pump. They're pretty much built on the same platform. This one, we just, again, we designed it with a few more bells and whistles with the roll storage. Um, and then the locking lid and the gauge, a uh, little bit more kitchen countertop friendly. This one, if you're going to be processing a lot of meat or from your garden or whatever, and you just want a rough and tumble machine, uh, the A100 um, is kind of our tried and true uh, vacuum sealer. Um, so I think that's it. They both have a built-in cooling fan. Uh, they both, oh, the A100 does also have an accessory port. It's over here on the side. It has um, the accessory port with the accessory function. It also has a marinate function and pulse vac. Um, back to the seal, I forgot to mention. Um, the A420 does have an adjustable seal time setting, but it's only uh, two levels. It's either dry or moist. And if you put it on the moist, that's going to give it a tad bit uh, longer sealing time so you can seal a little bit thicker of a bag. The uh, A100 has an adjustable seal time setting um, up to six, so it's three to six. So if you are wanting to vacuum seal thicker bags like Mylar bags, um, then this one can seal, heat seal Mylar bags. Um, it won't be able to vacuum the Mylar bags unless they have that embossed texture on them that is required on um, suction vacuum sealers. So that's that's about it with the seal time. Um, let's see, we're gonna check in for, I think that's it on the comparisons of the two. Um, were there any other questions? Let's see, let me get this sealer back on. Can we get this sealer back on or no? I want to do, I want to do a contest. I was going to see, see the cycle time difference between the, can we get both of these on at the same time? Cool. All right. I might need, I'm going to get some assistance in here. Um, we're going to do a little competition between the two and just run a regular vacuum seal cycle with a pork chop and a quart size bag on both of these and see which one 
um, has a faster vacuum time. We've never tried this before, so this will be interesting. I think if I were to vote, I think that the A100 might win. I think that the A420 uh, takes a little bit longer on the ceiling. I'm gonna wash my hands. All right, so we've got two, two pork chops, two sealers. You wanna go ahead, open it up, place it in there. Okay, and we'll close that. And on the count of three, we're gonna, you're gonna press auto vac and seal. His is ready to go. I'm gonna press start. I'm gonna hold down the lid and we'll let both of these sealers do their thing. Ready, go. A100 a tad bit faster. It's sealed. This one's still sealing. It's almost done. And that one is complete. But put them side by side. There we go. Very good result. All right. I think that's it. <clears throat> we didn't have any more questions. Double check. Make sure we didn't have any last things to go over. All right, I think we're good to go. Um, please, if if we didn't cover any questions that you have, if we didn't cover anything in this uh, live, then we'd be happy to answer any additional questions that you have. You can email us at info at Avid Armor. And uh, thank you for joining us and hope to uh, have you back next time that we do our Facebook Live. Have a good day.